Welcome to Washington Hospital Today, the program dedicated to sharing timely information about the community hospital that's been taking care of Washington Township Healthcare District residents since it opened in 1958. Washington Hospital Today is provided for the sole purpose of informing residents about healthcare topics and issues that have been covered during community forums, free health and wellness classes, or as part of educational sessions held during the district's open board meetings. This program is one more way that Washington Hospital helps empower you, the residents of the district, by providing information needed to make informed decisions about your health. So when Sandy asked me to talk, um, she wanted me to talk about how to partner with your physician. So a lot of this is going to be fairly general information and we can answer a lot of questions at the end. And like Sandy said, it's not meant to take the place of what you need to talk to your own physician about because a lot of this will be very general guidelines, very general type things of when I'm approaching someone in my office. Um, I don't personally have diabetes, but I have close family members who have diabetes, so I do know the process of what a lot of you go through. Um, so the other thing I have to tell you, there's no magic bullets and there's no magic answers in this, in this lecture. But what I'd like for you to do is maybe take home a few ideas of what you can do to make your health better. And I'd like to emphasize that you're not alone. Out there, there's 26 million diabetics in the United States. There are 53 million pre-diabetics that will become diabetic within the next 10 years. So I think all of you are doing a great step in coming to these lectures, making, um, you're taking time and making yourself available to these lectures. So you've taken a great step for this. And I hope I'm gonna give you a few more steps that you can kind of take along the way. So primarily wanna emphasize that you have a healthcare team. You have diabetes educators like Sandy and Vetus from the Diabetic Education Center here at Washington Hospital. They work together to provide a very strong program that gets a lot of information out there to the community. Other people that ought to be on your team are podiatrists and a dentist because a lot of times diabetics have foot problems that they're not always aware of and your, your podiatrist can help you with that. Your dentist, and I'll talk about this a little bit later, a lot of times when we have questions about why have I got bad breath or why is my mouth dry, you know, a lot of times your dentist can help you with those kind of things. An ophthalmologist is also key because you may not know that you've got retinal problems until they're pretty far advanced, but if you're seeing an ophthalmologist on a regular basis, they're gonna pick that up for you. And then also your primary care physician. Um, it can be an, an internist, a family practitioner, um, a healthcare provider, and these are most of the people on your team. But what's important is you are the head of the team. You're in charge. We're basically kind of uh, captain sort of guiding you. You're the admiral. You're the one who's in charge telling us where the ship is going. The other thing is you are in control. There are a lot of things in this world we're not in control of. We're not in control of the economics. We're not in control of foreign policy. But you're in control of yourself. So if there's anything you can do, you can take control of yourself. It's not easy. I guarantee you that it is not easy, but that's one thing you can do. And sometimes small steps give you big rewards. And sometimes it's not something you're necessarily going to see. You might see your cholesterol get better. You might see your blood pressure get better. You might see your blood sugar get better. But sometimes knowing that you're in control gives you a lot of confidence. And that makes people feel better. And I think that helps keep people motivated because so much of diabetes is just overwhelming. It's scary. Um, it, sometimes you get angry, you get frustrated, and it's, it's a big issue. And as I put in the article in the newspaper, it's basically your full-time job, too, because you have to think about every day, what am I going to eat, what am I going to do, what's my schedule, when am I checking my sugar, when am I doing my blood pressure. It's a full-time job. So you are in control, but there are steps to being in control. You need to say, I'm gonna work with my healthcare team. You need to learn as much as you can. Pay attention to what your healthcare team is gonna tell you. Ask questions. Um, at the hospital, we have a brochure that we give to first-time patients. Please ask. We want patients to ask, because the more you ask, 
the more you understand about your medications, about why you have diabetes, how it affects your body, it's gonna help you a lot. It's gonna keep you in control of what's going on. And when you're in control, you're gonna move forward. You're gonna do great. So you wanna know as much about diabetes as possible. So you wanna know your test results, things that are going on with you, things that are going on with your doctor. You wanna know as much about diabetes as possible, which is why I think every one of you are here. So that's great. You also have a right. When you're talking to your healthcare team, you have a right to be involved with your healthcare planning. So when I see a patient in the office, I don't expect them to go, uh-huh, 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 and out the door they go to do whatever they were doing before. I want them to be an active participant in whatever the care plans or their, our goals are gonna be. So with your team, you wanna set goals. And I'll talk about a little bit later, you wanna, small, you wanna set small goals, little tiny goals to start with. Because sometimes taking on a big task I'm gonna make my sugar better, I'm gonna lose 20 pounds in a month. <laughs> Those are not realistic goals. But I think if you see yourself making small goals and you're achieving them, again, you are in control. There's not much else there that you can be in control of, but you can be in control of you. The other thing you wanna do is try to understand what your tests mean. So if you don't understand what's a blood sugar, what's an A1C, what's a BUN, ask, and we will try to explain to you, and I'm gonna go over that a little bit too. You want to make sure that your health care provider can answer your questions. And if you don't understand it, just say, I need to hear it in plain English. Don't skip the medical stuff. Just tell me straight English I need to know. As a lot of times as doctors, we start talking to each other really fast. And again, you may need to say, whoa, slow down. I don't understand. A lot of times as we get older, we lose our hearing. And it's very important, I think, for physicians and patients to speak in a way that we can be understood. So if your doctor's talking too fast, your healthcare provider, the podiatrist, the ophthalmologist talking too fast, say, slow down, please. I need to understand. I want to understand. I want to participate. So make sure you get your questions answered. And sometimes it may not be the first time you understand everything, but it's a process. Again, I like to see patients make the most of their office appointments. Most of our office appointments are 10, 15 minutes, and you've got a lot of stuff to jam into 15 minutes. I've got all the things I want to make sure that the patient understands about their medications. They've got all the questions they want to ask me. So be prepared. I prepare ahead of time for my patients when they're coming in. I make sure I've got the chart ready. We've got the test results there. If there's a consultant who's been involved, try to get that information ready so that when the patient's sitting in front of me, we're focused, we're on the same page, we're talking about all the answers. You might want to decide ahead of time what questions you want to ask. And I'll go through some questions that you might want to include when you're seeing your doctor. But if you write it down and decide what you want to ask, then you're not halfway home going, ah, oh, man, and you forget what you, something was pretty important to you. The other thing is write the answers down. I have one gentleman who is a retired engineer, and he comes in with a legal page like this. And half of me goes, oh, my gosh when I see that, but I know he's written it down, he's thought about every single piece, and he writes down the answers. So even though the offices it may take a little bit longer, I know he's got it. He's not gonna go home and say, what was it you said I don't understand? So write down your questions, write down your answers. Like my mom goes to the doctor and she, I said, well, okay, here's your questions, she writes them all down. I talked to her two days later, well, what would they say? I don't know. So write down the answers, because that will help you remember. And then if there's something you don't completely understand, next time say, you told me this, but I don't understand. Explain to me again. So the more information you get, the more information I know you understand, because a lot of times I tell the patient, well, I want you to take this medication, and they come back in the next visit, go, how'd it go? They go, well, I forgot how to take it, so I didn't. You know, it's like, <laughs> wait a minute. So write down your answers, write down the information, write down directions, when you're supposed to take medications with food, before foods, night time, day time, whatever. So again, what to expect from the office visit? You wanna take control. Again, you are in control. You wanna set goals. Obviously, our biggie goal is blood sugar, and it's been talked about a whole bunch of times, so I kinda of decided I'm gonna bypass on that because blood sugars, you guys should probably have by now. I'm gonna talk a little bit about blood pressure. I'm gonna talk a little bit about cholesterol and kidneys, a little bit about meal planning. So you wanna set a goal. Pick something that you wanna work on. So if you wanna work on your blood pressure, you wanna work on your activity, 
You want to work on meal planning. Pick something, even if it's small. Then you want to set an action plan. How am I going to reach that goal? What do I need to do? Suppose you decide I'm going to exercise. You can't just say to yourself, I'm going to start exercising. Do you have the right shoes? Do you have somebody to go with you? Do you have a safe neighborhood? Do you need to go to Lake Elizabeth instead? Do you need to go to the ball instead? Because the weather's always good there. Just don't take any money or credit cards. Again, you want to look at ways to measure your progress. And again, I think the more that you're going to see results, the more confident you're going to feel and the better about this disease. Because again, it's a full-time job. It's not going away. You've got this for the next 20, 40, maybe 50 years, some of you out there. And again, what to do if you have questions? If you go home and you can't think of everything and write things down, you know, what do I do if I have questions in between visits? Can I call my doctor? Can I call the advice nurse? You know, do I call the diabetes educator? Can I go online? Where do I get information? So again, issues to talk about when you're at the doctor's office. Talk about how you're feeling. I'm frustrated. I'm mad I have diabetes. I don't want this. You know, again, that needs to be kind of addressed and resolved. And that's one of the great things about having a support system over here is you have chances to vent. Because a lot of times if you're venting to your spouse, they're going, and half the time when I was talking to my husband, he says, is this the time where I have to listen or I'm just nodding my head in agreement? So a lot of times your spouse wants to be supportive. They want to be involved, but they may not understand what's going on. So again, when to call for help and things like the support systems that you have here are great ideas. The other thing we want patients to do is to bring in your blood sugar diary. Bring in the list of when you've been checking your blood sugars and please don't fudge. If you didn't do it, just say, I didn't do it. Sometimes people write down numbers because they think that makes them look good, but that's the wrong way to do things. A lot of times the meters will download and a lot of physicians do have the programs where they can download. So if your physician has that, you can just bring the meter. If not, you need to write things down. You also need to sort of remember what medicines you're taking and you probably should have a list that you keep in your wallet or purse or someplace that's safe. That if you end up being sick or you're seeing an on-call doctor or you're in the emergency room, you have a list of your meds and if you're taking any new medications. <clears throat> the other thing you want to talk to your doctor about is anything that's a life changer. I had one guy whose insurance changed. So he said, well, I can only take the generic meds, so I dumped all the other ones. <laughs> kind of went to the ground. So I said, no, 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 we'll work on that. Let me figure what we can do. We'll get you back on your meds. Because obviously, not on meds, not going to be controlled. Big problem. Other things to talk about is your weight. You know, some medications make you lose weight. Some medications make you gain weight. So maybe you want to talk to your physician about that and your blood pressure. Again, test results. You want to ask them, what are my test results? What's my A1C? What's my BUN? What's my cholesterol? And if you need to, where do I go for more information? The library here has great information. They have magazines that are great, wonderful resources. They also will help you if you're sort of a novice like me and don't know how to go online. They have, they'll show you how to go online, how to search for things. And they'll tell you good websites to look for that are reliable. So. Mostly when I'm talking to patients in the office, these are kind of the benchmarks that we are doing every three months when we're seeing a patient. And again, your doctor may be seeing you more often, may be seeing you less often. So these are just guidelines, just goals. Your doctor, your healthcare practitioner may do something somewhat different. So usually every three months we want to look at an A1C. So how many out there know what A1C is? Uh, a few, good, okay. So A1C is a measure of your blood sugar over the last three months. Because if you come in and we're checking your blood sugar with your meter and you just had a piece of pie, it's gonna be pretty high. If you didn't have anything but water for about you know, 12 hours, it's gonna be pretty low. The A1C gives us a ballpark of the last three months. So that again is very helpful to know. So what your finger stick sugars are when you're checking them, but also the A1C, and that's something your healthcare provider will order. The blood pressure check. We always want to check a blood pressure when you're coming into the office. And as much as people don't like it, we do a weight check. I usually tell people, pretend it's your IQ. <laughs> so we do want a weight check because I want to see, are you making progress? Are the medications causing problems? Where are we going with this? The other thing that's very important that I want patients to do every day is a look at their feet. But especially when you come into the office, I have patients take off shoes and socks and we look at their feet. Many times diabetics lose sensation on the bottom of their feet and they may not realize, oh, the sock is rubbing, the seam is rubbing, 
there's the kids' toys I stepped on. I've got a blister, and you don't even see it or notice it until you actually look. Or you're taking your socks off, and there's a sticky part from where it's bleeding from a blister. So again, a foot check is very important for you to do it every day, but make sure your physician looks at your feet every visit. Every six months, we want you to get a dental exam. I think it's very important that you get your teeth checked. Um, there's a lot of gingivitis that can exacerbate your diabetes. And it may be that you've got like a, you know, an abscess, a little teeny root canal, may not even be aware of it, but any kind of infection can trigger your diabetes for your sugars to go high. The other thing we'd like to look at is a urine protein. And I'll talk about this again in a few minutes. Annually, we want to do just a physical exam, check out everything head to toe in your birthday suit. Check your cholesterol at least once a year. Most of us check it more often than that, but baseline at least once a year. The other thing is seeing your eye doctor and having an eye exam as much as we hate it, putting the drops in, putting that big bright light in there, that's called a dilated eye exam, where they're looking at the back of your eye, the retina, looking for any kind of changes that are gonna be there. Because if there are blood vessels that are breaking because of the blood sugar's too high, that's something they can treat before you lose your vision but you can only find it if you're getting checked. Um, and again, flu shot. Most people are afraid of flu shots, but believe me, there's way more good to come from a flu shot than something bad. Most people say, well, I'll get the flu if I get a flu shot. That's usually not true. You get maybe a little bit of some fever, maybe a little muscle aches, but not the flu. This year is pretty bad. We've seen a lot of coughs, a lot of congestion. The census of the hospital has been very high. And again, influenza is starting to ramp up in California. The other thing we like to encourage people, if you are smoking, stop. This is not easy. This is gonna take a lot of effort, but work on it. It's worth it. The pneumonia vaccine is usually once before you're 55. After 55, we'll dose it again. If you come into your doctor's office and you're 65, you'll get it once and that'll be it. So it's not like a flu shot that gets done every year. The flu shot is done every year because the virus changes. The pneumonia shot is because of a bacteria, and it covers a small number of bacteria. It doesn't cover all of them, but it covers a small number, but those don't change. So that's why the pneumonia shot is once or maybe twice ever. So what are some things that we're goals that we want to look at in terms of when the patient comes to the office? Well, we want to look at heart disease and we want to look at how that impacts diabetes. In other words, when we're tracking the blood pressure. So the goal for blood pressure, and again, this is a generalization, this can change. The goal is 130 over 80. If you have heart disease, your doctor may want this number lower. If you're in your 80s and have some heart disease, your numbers may actually be higher. So again, this is a goal. This is just a reference point. Your doctor may tell you other things. But when you come into the office, it's very helpful for the patient to say, well, what is my blood pressure? I mean, how are you gonna know what it is if you don't ask? So ask what my blood pressure is. And if it's like, let's say it's 140 over 90, ask them, well, what's it mean if I'm over goal? How does that affect me? What am I supposed to do? Um, how often should I get it checked? If it's normal, do I check it every three months? Do I check it at home? If I'm on blood pressure medicine, do I check it more often? Do I check it daytime, nighttime, after exercise? Where, you know? Ask those questions so that your healthcare provider and you are on the same page. And again, ask, if I'm not a goal, what can I do to help? With blood pressure, maybe it's gonna be a change of medications. Maybe your doctor's gonna say, well, let's try losing weight. Maybe your doctor's gonna say, let's try some exercise. So again, you wanna ask, what can I do if it's not where it should be? This is very important. You wanna pick foods that are healthy. So you want to pick superfoods, not super size. So most of our foods are categories in the carbs and also in the fats. And both of those are very important for diabetics. So in terms of cholesterol, again, these are goals. If you have heart disease, your doctor may say, I want your goals lower. So usually for cholesterol, we're looking at a goal of less than 180. And again, recommendations change. When originally we were looking at cholesterols, we were looking at 300, we were going, oh, that's not so bad. And then it got to be 250. And then it got to be 200. And now we're down to 180. If you have heart disease, your doctor may be saying to you 170. So this is a ballpark. There are two major categories of cholesterol. There's the LDL, which is your bad cholesterol, and the HDL, which is your 
good cholesterol. So the LDL is basically what plugs up your arteries, causes the plaque, causes the blockages in the arteries. The HDL, if you will, is sort of like if you remember the old Pac-Man game where the Pac-Man's coming along and chomp, 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 chomp. That's what your HDL does pretty much. It's the good cholesterol. So we want your bad cholesterol less than 70. We want your good cholesterol up. So total down, LDL down, HDL up. I kind of remember HDL is highly desirable. It actually means high density. But I tell people, remember, highly desirable. That's the good cholesterol. So for men, we want the cholesterol HDL goal to be above 45. For women, over 50. So again, ask your doctor, what is my level? What does it mean? When should I get it checked? Once a year, twice a year? And if I'm not at goal, what do I do? How do I do this? Do I need medications? Do I need to watch my diet? Do I need to exercise? Do I need to lose weight? You know, have your physician and your healthcare team give you pointers about what to do if it's not a goal. This is also very important for kidneys. We want to say no to salt. There is so much salt in foods these days. Most of you who kind of get used to reading labels, you can see how much salt is in certain products. And again, the lower the salt, the better. So lower the pressure better, lower the cholesterol, lower the blood pressure, lower the sugar, lower, lower, only HDL up. So we want to say no to salt because salt basically affects your kidneys. The goal for the BUN, this is called blood urea nitrogen, BUN. And this is most of the times done on a lab test that the doctor or your physician will send you to the lab to have blood tests drawn. BUN is blood urea nitrogen. So your kidneys are pretty smart. They know what to keep, what to get rid of. So the BUN measures waste products that's in your system. So your BUN should be low because your body should be getting rid of the waste products. If your kidney is not working so well, it's not filtering so well, your BUN number may be going up. Frequently for diabetics, the BUN number going up is pretty serious. The majority of patients on dialysis are because of diabetes. The other measure for your kidney function is creatinine. And creatinine, again, is a byproduct of muscle breakdown that your kidney should know what to get rid of and what to keep. So we usually look for a number less than 1.5. If you're a very small person, you're maybe Asian lady, petite, your creatinine should probably be more like 0 0.9. If you're the football player that's 300 pounds and six foot something, maybe your creatinine's 1.7. So again, these are relative numbers not meant to be hard and fast. The microalbumin is another very important number. When we do a urine test, most of you remember how they dip the urine, they put a little stick in there. So they're looking for sugar, for one thing. We're looking for protein. And that's just an average measure. The microalbumin is actually something that they measure from a urine sample to measure how much protein specifically is in the urine. And again, your kidneys should know what to keep, what to get rid of. So the microalbumin number, so the kidneys should be not getting or getting rid of too much protein or, or albumin. So that number should be less than 30. So this would be something you want to ask your physicians. What are my numbers? What does it mean? How often should I be checking? If I'm not at goal, what should I do? What is my goal? Am I a small person and my goal is this way? Am I a big person and my goal is that way? So again, you want to ask your physician, what's my goal? If I'm not at goal, what do I do? Again, when you're getting ready for an office visit, write down your questions. And again, like I said, write down the answers. It helps so much when you get home and you, you've had a big discussion about we need to change your medication, your cholesterol is this, your BUN is that. You get home and you go, all those numbers don't make any sense to me. So write them down. It will help a lot. The other thing I like to have people do is to bring a family member or a friend with you, especially if you're newly diagnosed diabetes or you're going through some changes. Let's say your blood pressure is way out of whack. Let's say your kidneys are way out of whack. Sometimes helping you will be a friend because sometimes they may hear things you don't hear. 
you know, they may stay, to, especially if I have a patient that has cancer, I never have them come into the office by themselves because they hear the C word and everything is out the door. Whereas if they have a friend with them, the friend's sitting there writing notes, taking in notes. And so again, the same thing with diabetes. See if you can bring a friend with you. It's especially helpful if you're talking about, we need to get your blood sugar down, your cholesterol down, your weight down. You're the patient, but the other person is the one doing the cooking or the shopping. They're the ones who's buying stuff that you shouldn't be eating. So if they're hearing the same message you're hearing, it's a whole lot easier and makes the discussions at home a whole lot easier. Because I'm sure your family members don't mean to sabotage you, but it's inevitable. The other thing is if you're really, really tempted with whatever it is, there was with the lecture last month, the guy was saying, well, my granddaughter has these candies and so I eat the candies. And the, <laughs> the suggestion was, just get rid of the candies or the granddaughter shouldn't be eating those anyway. So if you're really, really tempted, if there's something you can't live without, get rid of it. Just don't buy it, don't keep it there. Or if you must, get those little teeny tiny packets. So instead of buying the Costco size of whatever it is, buy the little teeny tiny sample size, the airline travel size. And again, if you have a hard time figuring out, okay, I'm dying, I'm so hungry, I can't stand it, Put some list on the refrigerator. You know, put a list of what's in the refrigerator that's good to eat. Carrots, apple sticks, cheese sticks, you know, whatever. Put a list there so that you're not gonna just bail out and order pizza. So, I mean, you wanna make sure that, you know, when you have those stressed out moments, you've got a plan in place. So put something on the front of the refrigerator listing the things that, you know, I'm hungry, I want a snack. Okay, here, this, this, this. Bring your blood sugar records again to, with you to your doctor's appointment. The other thing is, if your doctor's running way far behind, bring something to eat. Because if you're sitting in their doctor's office for two, three hours, your blood sugar is doing this, and the doctor wasn't see, doesn't want to see you doing this. So bring something with you. Bring you know a couple pack of crackers, some sliced up apples, or something like that. They don't want you eating in the waiting room. You can go outside, but you know if your doctor keeps you waiting for a long time, you need to bring a sack. The other thing is to maybe carry some candy. Now, again, travel size, not Costco size candy. So in case you do feel like low blood sugar, you're gonna be covered. Again, it's important for you to ask. You wanna ask about medications. What's the side effect of this medicine? What can I expect? Because a lot of times I tell patients, okay, this medicine may cause some diarrhea. So then we start having loose stools. Oh yeah, they told me that was gonna happen. I'm okay with that. If you're having so much diarrhea with the medication that life's intolerable, tell the doctor, I need something else. Maybe I can change how I take it. Maybe I can change the dose. Maybe I just need a different medication. This one doesn't work for me. You also need to share with your doctor when you're upset. You know, what's not working for you? You're telling me to check my sugar four times a day. I've got a schedule. My boss is this. My kids are that. I can't do this. You know, so if you're stressed out or something like that, let the doctor know what you can do. You know, I can do this on the weekends I can do four, weekdays I can do one or two. If you've reached your goal and you're really happy, let the doctor know. We always need a little plus in our day. Again, intimacy is something that you want to talk to your doctor about. Um, again, if you want to talk to your doctor about like bad breath, you know, a lot of times people that have high blood sugar are going to have bad breath. And again, trying to control your sugar will be the way to get around of it. Dry mouth happens a lot if your blood sugar's out of whack. Women and even men get yeast infections, and you need to be able to talk to your daughter about it. I've got an itch, but I can't tell you where it is. Or a discharge or something. The other thing you need to talk to your doctor about sex. I mean, if you're in newly diagnosed diabetes, you're not sure what's going on, it's really hard for you to be intimate with your partner, you need to talk to your partner about that and maybe even talk to the doctor if you're having too many problems. And a lot of times for men, erectile dysfunction is very common with diabetics. So again, you want to be able to talk to your doctor about those kind of questions and you can't be afraid to ask. I mean, maybe you want to put it to the very end of what your discussion is, but you know, write it down and if it's important, talk. Resources are out there. Um, there's American Diabetes Association has a great website. Um, the National Education Diabetes Society has a great website. Again, you've got a community library that's right here with Linda who's a fabulous resource that can help you look up almost anything. So what do we do if we want to change? So is this lady in control and she's excited she lost weight? She's so surprised she didn't know she gained so much weight or she doesn't know what to do with it. So. 
when we sometimes think something takes us by surprise, maybe that's a trigger we need to make a change. So when you say to yourself, I'm ready for a change, you need to be committed. It's really, really hard, but you need to stay motivated. And sometimes if I have somebody who's trying to lose weight or try to stop smoking, I say, well, why don't you tell one or two people so that in case you fall off the bandwagon, they can kind of gently encourage you. Don't tell the whole office or the whole house, I'm going on a diet, I'm gonna lose weight, I'm gonna stop smoking, I'm not gonna eat this, because sometimes it doesn't always work. The change has to be something very important to you. If you're saying, my grandkids are so important to me, I wanna see them graduate, I wanna see my granddaughter go down the aisle when she gets married, whatever is important to you, that needs to be a motivating factor for you. You need to figure out why things are important and that's a key to staying motivated because it's this is a lifelong process. It's like I said, there's no easy answers. There's no magic out there. You have to pick something that's really important to you and use that as your motivator. The other thing is sometimes family members may try to sabotage and they don't always do this knowingly, but sometimes you may have to sit down and say, my doctor told me I really have to lose weight. I've got knee problems. I'm diabetic. I'm going to need surgery. Don't sabotage me. Help me. Support me. Don't sabotage me. You also have to believe that you can change. It's not impossible. You have to start with small steps, but you can do it. So like Mr. Obama, you can do it. You are in control. You can do it. It's not easy, but you can do it. So you have to figure out, okay, what am I willing to change? What do I want to change? Look at what you're currently doing in terms of your everyday habits. Am I not sitting down to breakfast? I'm grabbing, you know, going by McDonald's or something like that and eating on the way to work. You know, are the kids yelling and screaming so we go to McDonald's or Jack in the Box? What are you doing? Activity. I work nine to five. I don't have time to exercise. The kids are this, my husband's that. You know, you can also exercise. Maybe you're standing on the phone, you're sitting there, you can move around. Maybe you can park a little bit further from the store. You know, a lot of things you can do to try to increase your exercise. You can take uh, the stairs instead of the elevator. Um, different things you can kind of work it in there. So maybe you're having trouble with medication. You can say, I just can't remember it sitting there, but I can't remember to do it. Put it somewhere else. Put it next to your toothbrush. Put it next to the dishwasher. Put it wherever you think it's an important place. I mean, most of us want to put, put medicines in the medicine cabinet, but sometimes it's too hard to remember that way. And again, start with just a few changes. Start with something very small. So small you're going to say, that's not worth it. But if it's really what you want to change and you can see yourself do it, the reward is going to be so big. Sometimes rewards that you can't see are the best ones. So one thing you might want to look at is maybe I can choose carbs better. Maybe you want to pick exercise. Do something that's fun with the kids, your family, your friends. You know, walk with a partner. Managing stress. Stress is very important. Stress doesn't cause diabetes, but it certainly can make it worse. It can certainly make your blood pressure worse. It certainly can make your cholesterol worse. It makes your life worse. So a lot of times we need to figure out how I'm going to manage stress. Now, not all of us can go sit out there on the lake and do things, but you know, we can for like a couple of minutes just put yourself someplace that's really nice, your favorite vacation place. You're playing with your grandkids. You know, sunsets when you've been on vacation. You can put yourself in a little bitty place that gives you relief. Maybe you want to stop smoking. So again, you need to figure out what it is that you want to change. What's the most important thing for you? And again, go small steps. So you can say, I want to exercise. So maybe what you want to do is, you know, get some shoes, find a place to exercise, figure out how I'm going to work it in there. I mean, you obviously can't go to the gym and do a cardio workout for an hour if you haven't exercised in three years. So start with something very, very small. The other thing is set yourself a timeline. So if you're saying, I'm going to exercise maybe just 15 minutes at lunch two days a week or one day of, during the week and one day on the weekend. So, and set a timeline. So maybe say you're gonna do it for two weeks or three weeks or a month. I mean, don't say I'm gonna, you know, do this forever. So set a timeline and see what you can do. If it looks like it's too hard, back it up a little bit. So if you're trying to exercise four days a week, you know, just do one, start with one. Give yourself control, give yourself something you can achieve. You're gonna feel good about it. 
you also need to find something you can add to your schedule. I mean, if you've got a full-time job or two jobs and you've got kids and or babysitting grandkids or whatever, you're not gonna be able to stuff all these things into your schedule. So find something that's gonna fit. Also figure out how often you wanna make your changes. And again, start with maybe just once a week. The other thing is keep it very realistic. Don't just say, I'm gonna lose 20 pounds in a month. It's not gonna happen. So maybe set a goal of five pounds in a month, one pound a week. I mean, something that you think you really can do and you can achieve. So once you're reaching your goal, don't just stop, keep going. Because old habits are very hard to break. So once you're into a new habit, suppose you're walking 15 minutes with a coworker at lunch. Suppose you're parking as far away from the store as you can park. You know, suppose you decide, I have to have McDonald's, but maybe you want to instead of supersize it, you want to downsize it. So instead of having the super fries, add the little fries. I mean, that's not a very healthy thing, but at least it's something you can do. You know, um, make a better choice. Make a meal plan. There's one day a week you're going to make something really healthy. Meal plans are very hard to do because if you don't plan for it or practice with it, it's almost impossible. And if you walk to the refrigerator and it's empty, it's up, oh, call the pizza man time. So. Pick something very small that you can do and something that's going to be easy because you're going to have to keep working higher and higher. And if it's easy, you're going to feel better about doing it. The next one won't be quite so hard. Again, watch for the roadblocks. Try to pick something realistic. Pick something small. Again, try to get your family members involved. I, usually if somebody's stopping, trying to stop smoking, you don't say tell the whole office. You know, tell one or two people so you can say, I'm having a really bad day, I'm trying to quit smoking, give me a break. You know, you can sort of get enlist some help and support. And once you've got it, go choose another goal. Okay, thank you very much for coming. I certainly appreciate your participation. So go out there and ask your questions.